This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the sectional anatomy of the brain. Match the following numbered statements with the lettered structures. This is a horizontal section of the brain at the level of the interventricular foramen. A is the large head of the caudate nucleus projecting into the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. The caudate nucleus together with the lentiform nucleus form the corpus striatum. And the corpus striatum has reciprocal connections with the substantia nigra. Thus, A matches with 5, is interconnected to the substantia nigra. B is the anterior part of the fornix, called the column of the fornix. The fornix is a bundle of association fibers in the limbic system. These fibers they begin on the surface of the hippocampus as the alveus, then aggregate medially as the fimbria, continue as the crura, left and right sides. The crura, they come together in the midline and form the body of the fornix. The body of the fornix travels anteriorly and divides again. The right and left parts separate as columns of the fornix. Each column continue through the hypothalamus to reach the mammillary bodies. Hence, B matches with 3. The fibers project to mammillary bodies. C is the internal capsule. It's a massive bundle of projecting fibers. Projecting fibers, by definition, pass from one level of the central nervous system to a higher or lower level. The internal capsule consists of five components, anterior limb, geno, posterior limb, retrolentiform, and sublentiform parts. C represents the geno, the bend. It is located at the medial tip of the lentiform nucleus, at the intersection of the anterior limb and posterior limb. The posterior limb is E. The geno includes fibers from the cortex to the brainstem, corticobulbar fibers. Hence, a lesion at this site could result in weakness in swallowing and speaking because of denervation of the nucleus ambiguous, which is the origin of special visceral efferent fibers, the fibers that accompany the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerve to supply the muscles of palate, pharynx, larynx, and upper esophagus. E is the posterior limb of the internal capsule located between the lentiform nucleus and the thalamus, D. The posterior limb of the internal capsule includes corticospinal fibers. These are the upper motor neurons that project to the contralateral anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Thus, a lesion at this site could result in contralateral hemiplegia in one. D is the thalamus in which the anterior nuclear group receives from the mammillary bodies, the mammillothalamic tract, but it doesn't project to the mammillary bodies. The fibers that project to the mammillary bodies constitute the fornix, B. In fact, the medial group of thalamic nuclei is connected to the prefrontal cortex and is thought to be involved in affective states, judgment, and some aspects of memory. These connections are through the anterior limb of the internal capsule. Thus, D matches with 4, projects to the prefrontal cortex of the frontal lobe. Don't forget that the anterior limb of the internal capsule also contains corticopontine fibers. Which of the following best describes the fibers in A? This is a section of the open part of the medulla, which is the upper part. Note the crumpled back shape of the large principal olivary nucleus that characterizes the upper medulla. A is a nerve fasciculus that is longitudinally oriented and adjacent to the midline. It is located most posteriorly in relation to the 
medial lemniscus and tectospinal fibers. Thus A is the medial longitudinal fasciculus. This consists of ascending and descending fibers that connect the vestibular nuclei to the nuclei controlling extraocular muscles, oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens nuclei. The medial longitudinal fasciculus is involved in coordinating head and eye movements. It provides for conjugate movements of the eyes coordinated with movements of the head to maintain the visual fixation. Thus, the best description is four connected to nuclei in the midbrain, and these are oculomotor and trochlear nuclei. The oculomotor nucleus is located at the level of the superior colliculus, and the trochlear nucleus is located at the level of the inferior colliculus. The commissural fibers in option one might indicate the olivocerebellar fibers, which are also shown here, leaving the hilum of the principal olivary nucleus, and they are directed medially, cross the midline, and go to the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Option two refers to the hypoglossal nucleus, supply the muscles of the tongue, and the, this hypoglossal nucleus is also located here in the same section, just dorsal to the medial longitudinal fasciculus, near the midline of the floor of the fourth ventricle, lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle. Option three, supply muscles in the pharynx, refers to the nucleus ambiguous, which is located in the reticular formation. Option five, carry sensations of pain and temperature, refer either to the spinal tract of the trigeminal, which carries these modalities of sensation from the head, or the spinal lemniscus, the continuation of the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tracts. This is a section of the midbrain. You can see the narrow cerebral aqueduct, which is the cavity of the midbrain. Also note the tectum with colliculi posteriorly. Anteriorly, you can identify the longitudinally running fibers forming the crust cerebri or basis pedunculi in two. And then this is on either side of the interpeduncular fossa. The crust contains projection fibers, corticopontine, corticobulbar, and corticospinal. As the name of the fibers indicate, they arise in the cerebral cortex and they descend to either the level of the pons or a level of the midbrain or to the bulb, to the medulla, or to the spinal cord, hence corticopontine, corticobulbar, and corticospinal. Collectively, they are projection fibers that connect different levels of the central nervous system. Thus, the type of fiber in two is projection fibers, B. The commissural fibers interconnect opposite sides of the brain, for example, the corpus callosum, while association fibers, they interconnect regions of the cerebral cortices within the same hemisphere, for example, the cingulum of the limbic system. Area one is located in the tegmentum next to the substantia nigra. It is egg-shaped in three dimensions, but in a cross-section, it looks circular. It is located at the level of the superior colliculus. The name red nucleus is derived from its pinkish hue in fresh sections, unstained sections. And the reason for this pinkish hue is that it is more vascular than the surrounding tissue. The red nucleus is involved in motor coordination, so the best choice here for the function of this area is motor coordination. It is considered as part of the extrapyramidal motor system. It receives from the cerebellum and cerebral cortex and projects to the inferior olive and to the cervical spinal cord, rubrospinal fibers. The other options here, like modulation of pain, is the function of the periaqueductal gray matter. Parasympathetic innervation, option C, is provided by the edinger westphal nucleus, which is also located at the, at the level of this section. These parasympathetic neurons, they innervate the sphincter pupillae and the ciliary muscle of the eyeball. 
a patient presented to the neurologist with double vision and was diagnosed later to have an intracranial tumor. Which lettered structures describe each of the clinical findings during examination of this patient? First, let's identify the level of the section. This is a section at the caudal part of the pons. It shows that the pons extends laterally to the middle cerebellar peduncle. It also shows cerebellar nuclei posteriorly and cerebellar cortex. Note here the basilar part of the pons and the tegmentum. The tegmentum contains the abducent nucleus here. The nucleus is located just lateral to the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Remember that the two are functionally related. Accents of the abducent nucleus travel ventrally in the tegmentum, and they are thus represented by B and C. And then they will continue, of course, as you can see here, into the basilar part of the pons, where they exit near the midline at the pontomedullary junction. The motor nucleus of the facial lies deep in the pontine tegmentum. Its accents, they course dorsomedially towards the abducent nucleus, and then they move around it, making a curve or a geno. So at this location, the geno of the facial nerve and the underlying abducent nucleus form an elevation in the floor of the fourth ventricle called the facial colliculus. So the facial colliculus is formed by the curving fibers of the facial nerve and underneath these fibers is the abducent nucleus, but not the facial nucleus. The facial nucleus is located deeper in the tegmentum of the pons. Fibers of the facial nerve then continue ventrolaterally to exit at the lateral margin of the pontomedullary junction. So these fibers are represented by D and A in this section. E and F represent the longitudinally running corticospinal and corticobulbar fibers. Now let's look at the first clinical finding. There was a double vision that became worse when the patient looked to the right. Looking to the right requires the use of the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus. The right lateral rectus is supplied by the right abducent nerve. So C is affected in this case. The second finding was that of facial paralysis affecting the whole right side of the face. Muscles of facial expression are supplied by the facial nerve and paralysis of the whole side of the face, that's to say upper and lower face on one side, indicates a lower motor neuron lesion affecting either the motor nucleus or the facial nerve itself on the same side of the body. So since the lower motor neuron lesion was on the right side, then it was the right facial nerve, D, that is affected. The third clinical finding was mild weakness of the lower left limb. Weakness of the lower left limb could result from involvement of corticospinal fibers. These are present in E and F. These corticospinal fibers are upper motor neurons, fibers, that are ultimately decussating and terminate upon contralateral anterior horn cells. At this level, the corticospinal fibers have not decussated yet, because they either decussate in the lower part of the medulla oblongata, in the motor decussation, or they decussate at segmental levels of the spinal cord. Since the fibers here, the corticospinal fibers here, are not decussated yet, then if the weakness affects the left lower limb, therefore it is the right corticospinal fibers, F, that are affected.